All right. So we talked and we've seen notes online and in class about physical properties before. And uh, physical properties are something you can observe without changing the substance. For, for example, you can see how heavy something is or what color it is or its density. You can observe all those things without doing a chemical process. And when you're done, uh, the substance is still the same. For example, if you want to measure uh, a brick, well, the brick is still the same length when you're done, whether you've measured it or not. Now, physical properties can be used to separate mixtures. We don't use physical properties to separate chemical compounds, okay? For example, we can't separate the sodium and the chlorine uh, in a cube of salt using a physical property, but we can separate mixtures using physical properties. Now, when you think about mixtures, we talk about salt water and things like that, but there are other types of mixtures. Like this, for example. I don't know how well you can see at home, but this is a bunch, this is a bunch of computer parts here, and um, there's wires and plastic, etc. And when we were talking about, earlier in class, we were talking about separating these things, how you do it at a recycle plant. You could use melting point, and you could slowly raise the temperature, and then first the rubber would melt away, and then second the plastic would go away, and then as you raise the temperature, you could hit the different melting points of the different types of metals that are in the wires, and then separate those metals. So that's all just a physical process. There's nothing chemical about it. Now we're going to do a cool lab. There's another video with the lab questions on it. This is sort of the intro to that lab, and it's a separated mixture. And you can see here in these pictures, we uh, are going to build a little contraption to take care of business. Now, this is a contraption. What we've got here is sand and salt and iron. And we're going to use the physical properties of sand, salt, and iron in our lab. Let's talk about that. We've got these three things. We've got sand. We've got salt. We have iron, and they're all very different. One of these is obviously uh, different than the other. One of these, well, what, what's, what, what of these to y'all seems the most different? Like it stands out from the other two. Iron, because iron is a what? Metal. And like a lot of metals, iron is what? Magnetic. That's exactly right. So it's a metal. And it's magnetic. So that's a good thing to know. All right? If we have a mixture in a beaker with a bunch of sand and a bunch of salt, a bunch of iron all mixed up, we can use magnetism to remove the iron. It would be a great idea to remove the iron um, with a magnet first. Okay? And the reason I'm saying it's first is because there are some other properties here of sand and salt. Let's think about sand and salt. Obviously, they're different colors, right? Sand is brown or sand color. Salts generally think of salts as being white. But uh, there's something, another difference between sand and salt here. Anybody got anything? All right, let me ask you a question. When you go to the beach, isn't it salt water? Right? And then when you get back in your car... You come back and you get back in your car, you're worried about wiping your feet off, right? What are you trying to wipe off your feet? Oh, oh water sticks to water sticks to sand. All right, yeah, sand can get sticky, right? Right? But have you ever come back and look at your car and it's been covered white from, from salt, like in your seat? You have? Have you ever come off the beach and like, oh, I've got to get this salt off of me before? No. Because where is the salt when you're at the beach? It's where? It's in the water. So why is the salt in the water? What does salt do? Yeah, salt dissolves. So that's cool. That's a good thing. That's going to help us. That's a physical property of salt. So iron has this physical property. It's magnetic. Salt has this very useful physical pro property. It dissolves. So what about sand? Can you think of a physical property that sand has? 
you'd have to get it super hot to melt it. So it's got a super high melting point, and that's going to help us actually. It's got a high melting point. Okay, that's good. It's got small grains, but the grains um, are big enough that uh, do you think sand would go through a paper filter? Huh? No. So it's, it's got a high melting point. It's got coarse grain. So if we just had a filter, you know, like a paper filter, the sand wouldn't go through that. Now, does salt go through a filter? No. It doesn't. But how could we get salt to go through the filter? Water. Yeah, salt water will go through the filter, but not salt itself. So see, the sand could be filtered, okay? Because it's got a high melting point. It's got coarse grain, all right? And now the salt, it dissolves, and then it will go through the filter, too, right? Right? And then the iron we can get out by using the magnet. So now we're just left with salt water. Now why did I tell you sand had a high melting point? Do you think the melting point of sand is higher than the melting point of salt water? Okay. Do you think the melting point of sand is higher than the boiling point of salt water? It is. So what if we <coughs> turn the heat up the sand's not going to melt, right? But if we have some sand, some salt, and some water, right? The sand will go out in the filter, and now I've got salt water left. We turn up the heat, what are we going to get rid of, the salt or the water? The water, and then we can just be left with salt. So that leads us to today's lab. And uh, I'm going to introduce it right here on the video. We've got a beaker here, clear beaker. I got some sand in the beaker, some sand in that beaker. There's a piece of gravel in there too. But nobody's perfect. All right, we got some sand. Now I'm going to put some iron in there with it, okay? So I've got some sand and some iron, and you can see it in there separately. And then I'm also going to put some salt in there. So if we look down in this beaker of sand, salt, and iron, we're going to separate them. Y'all see this? But the problem is, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give it to you just in a pile of sand, salt, and iron. Okay? So that's today's lab. We're going to use these physical properties right here to take care of business, to separate them.